Jim, let me ask you about a couple guys that recently passed away. One, Randy Colley, Moondog Rex, obviously many different names. He was one of the assassins at one point. Were you around him much outside of Memphis ever? Um, well, not not really outside of Memphis, but I was around him on several runs in Memphis. Uh, I was a photographer when he and uh, Roger Smith were the assassins in, what, 78, 79 here. Um, uh, I was here as the for the Moondogs. I, as a matter of fact, I was supposed to manage the Moondogs until Lawler had a change of heart and gave them to Jimmy Hart, too. Wait, uh, so he hold told, on. You were supposed to manage the Fabulous Ones and the Moondogs? He had told me... Uh, like a week or two before the Moon Dogs got there, that's he had the Moon Dogs coming in because he had all the talent coming in that he had promised spots to when he and Lance were going to open up their own promotion. And instead, when Jarrett agreed to make him partner and they settled everything back down, that's why all the guys that Dundee brought in got their notice. Adrian Street, Miss Linda, the Sheep Herders, um, all the Jesse Barr, all those guys got shipped out because Lawler had guys standing by waiting to come into his new territory. And so in one night, my entire stable uh, got uh, lost the loser, loser leave town match and had to leave. <clears throat> so I, w- I went to him. I was like, uh, Jerry, uh, <laughs> if I got any, oh, the moon dogs are coming in. You're going to get the moon dogs. And that's the last thing that I heard for a week or two. And then I think at the same time as the moon dogs debuted on television and ended up, they were managed by Jimmy and that was the right thing. I wasn't ready for the moon dogs then. And they were in a top, they, they were top heels for that time that run in Memphis. They drew a lot of money and especially the thing with the fabs. I wasn't ready for that. It was better that Jimmy had it, but I think it was the same weekend. I was in like Tupelo on Friday night. I I think that was when uh, like my last guy was finishing up and Eddie Marlin always had the TV list tell who was supposed to be on TV the next morning. And he didn't have my name down. I said, you're sure I'm not supposed to be there, Eddie? Cause I've been there a lot. I'm thinking this is bad, right? I'm not on TV. Nope. Your name's not on the list. I said, I'll come. No name's not on the list. If it was on the, if you were there, it'd be on the list. Right. So <laughs> the first time I stay home and don't go to TV, I'm watching it at my cousin's house where I was staying and that's when the Galaxians, Danny Davis and Ken Wayne debuted their first match. And I heard fucking Lancer Dave, one of the others say the Galaxians here today without their manager, Jim Cornette. I'm like, Newman, what the <laughs> fuck? What the fuck? I'm like, it gave me hope that, you know, I'm, I'm not fucking done. And at the same time, I'm like, now they're going to be mad at me. Cause I wasn't there. I wasn't there. I was Owen. So I fucking, then of course that night and, Nashville, right? I go, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, well, you, they just left you off the list. No heat. Cause it was a last minute decision. Lawler said, well, what the fuck? I can't give Cornette the fucking moon dogs. They got to give them to Jimmy, but now what's he going to do? So he stuck me in the last minute with Danny and Ken. And it was, that was good for me because they were an underneath team, but they actually, to be quite honest, as far as performing professional wrestling, as far as workers, they were much better then Larry Latham and Randy Colley. And so they taught me more about how to manage tag teams and how sp- high spots worked and how to, to get heat on the baby face and, and pace a match and stuff. It got me ready to manage tag teams. Whereas, and we didn't draw a goddamn dime, but they were better workers. The moon dogs were a gimmick on top in the main events and wasn't a place for on the job training with a fucking rookie manager. Because I wouldn't have learned anything except how to duck and stay out of the fucking way. Any stories about Randy Colley? Any funny instances? What kind of guy was um, he? Anything you could tell us? Well, no, and I just saw Randy. Well, that's right. We got off of Randy. I saw uh, Randy. Gosh, where was it? It was at one of the fan fests in the last year or so. And, and uh, no, he was a good guy. He was a, he was a, he was a country guy, country boy. Um, And, you know, he was just, he was one of those guys that got in the business. He was big and strong and he had a good look in various gimmicks and he, he knew the business and he understood what, you know, what got over and was able to work, you know, like I said, in a variety of different gimmicks and as different people, but he never really became a star as himself because he was always getting put in either a mass team or a gimmick team or even, 
you know, when he tried to work the uh, demolition gimmick himself, I think in Continental, um, Detroit demolition, Detroit demolition after the, when the whole thing was up in the air there, he, it, but he was a great worker and a great talent and a nice guy. And, you know, funny to be around. I don't really have any incredible stories, never traveled with him, but he, he was a good guy. And he was one of those guys that in the old days could always be a star in wrestling because you could just change yourself into somebody else as a single with no mask and no gimmick. Randy Colley never really became a star, but in his various personas, he was, he worked in a lot of top territories and was a big fucking deal. 